stirred a new tale, a layer down as I've heard it told. Its letters set its history pressed of an adventure brave and bold, forever set in heart, in stone, like all great myths of old. The Green Knight is an epic medieval fantasy film released by A24 on July 30th, 2021. Based on the exploits found in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, the movie follows Sir Gawain as he seeks out the Green Knight, intent on facing him again one year after challenging him in King Arthur's court. Though A24's life has been somewhat short at this point, it has been rather storied. In a matter of 10 years, they went from being a background passion project studio to being one of the most reputable studios in Hollywood, with a cadre of lasting impressions made by the likes of Everything Everywhere All at Once, Hereditary, Midsummer, The Whale, and Euphoria, just to name a few. But if you could pick only one reason why they have made such an impact, it might just be down to the unique stories that they bring to life on the screen. And this streak remains present in their reimagined adaptation of the old tale of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. This feature stands as perhaps one of the most visually impressive films to be produced under A24. But is the reputation of this film built on aesthetic alone, or is there more to it lying beneath the surface? Well, in examining the merits of the film, it's undeniable that the visual aspect is perhaps its most well done. The film is visually gorgeous. You could pause this movie just about anywhere and you are likely to have some screensaver worthy material staring back at you. Everywhere you go and every scene you see are carefully shot to appeal to the senses as much as humanly possible. This carries over into the sets as well, with all of the structures, be they bright and lively or desolate and silent, working to build the emotion and splendor of all that unfolds before you. The visual effects on display are simultaneously grand yet restrained. No matter how wondrous the spectacle is, be it a roaming herd of giants, or a simple green knight in the forest chapel, every element has its place in this world, waiting to be beheld. This is held together by a truly mesmerizing soundtrack. Every musical piece carries with it a unique identity that not only grounds the historical fantasy setting, but also helps to tell its part of the story matching its cadence to the landscapes and moments we observe. If you could have only one takeaway from this movie, it would be that it is, in the most literal sense of the word, art. This artistry is propped up by some very talented actors bringing their best to the table. Dev Patel does a phenomenal job in showing the audience this fantastic, yet frightening world through the eyes of someone no more qualified to understand it than we are. His emotional journey is one we can all empathize with and feel in our own way, and the conflict in his heart as he is made to consider whether he is truly able to face what awaits him resonates deeply no matter who you are. The supporting cast are equally memorable. Alicia Vikander is a surefire winner in her dual role as a Lady of the Forest and the lover Essel waiting for Gawain back home. Representing love and lust, she makes an instant impact in both roles, with Essel having one of the most memorable and powerful lines in the movie, while the Lady of the Forest delivers the best, most symbolic monologue of the movie. While you could pick any other actor you see, from Sean Harris to Joel Edgerton to Aaron Kellyman to Barry Keegan, and find something to admire, the most memorable of them all would without a doubt be the titular Green Knight that sets our hero's journey into motion. The voice of Ralph Ineson in this role is both jaw-dropping and spine-chilling and this beautiful monstrosity dominates the screen with his quiet yet domineering presence. And his impact on the life of Gawain, and all the lessons this game taught him, 
help to make this night a larger-than-life presence in a way both we and Gawain didn't fully expect. The talent of the actors is held high by the dialogue. Though it is often simple, it is effective, with every exchange being thoughtful and well-worded. While most of the movie is spent in thoughtful silence, the exchanges we do have are quite impactful. Among the most memorable of these exchanges are Gawain obliging St. Winifred's rather bizarre request, a surreal exchange between Gawain and a fox, and the Lady of the Forest's musings of what greed represents to the human mind. And you can best believe that the final encounter with the Green Knight brings with it some of the movie's most memorable moments, though not perhaps for the reasons we are initially led to believe. Themes of honor, loyalty, legacy, and desire inhabit every conversation we witness and seep into the fabric of what this movie builds to. Every exchange brings with it a great sense of profundity, poignance, or charm that helps to keep you thinking about all that lies ahead and what Gawain might be giving up in pursuing it. While there are many praises to sing regarding the passion and artistry on display in this movie, it is unfortunately not always to the movie's benefit. This is a movie that is very thoughtful and very ponderous in its execution. Unfortunately, that also means the movie is very slow. From the standpoint of being a fantasy adventure style story, there's very little that actually takes place until the final act of the movie. For the most part, this story consists of Gawain wandering from place to place, and while this gives the audience ample opportunity to take in all the beautiful scenery and imagery, it also prevents the movie from building up steam until we have arrived at the doorstep of the Green Knight. The great emphasis on exploring themes, often in such a quiet and subdued manner that you won't even notice it happening, makes the pacing of this movie suffer. Though there is a great homage paid to the myths of old, and many philosophical musings to consider if you pay close attention, it requires you to be patient enough to sit for 40 minutes before setting off on the journey and a further 45 minutes of what can often feel like wandering around doing essentially nothing. Ironically enough, the giants, who I mentioned earlier as being a visual standout of the film, are a perfect example of the pacing issues present. Their role in the story feels almost nonsensical, as their interaction with Gawain consists largely of howling at the moon before wandering off and leaving him to trail after them. Though I am sure there is a great and deep meaning to the moment they share with Gawain here, I don't know what it is. So if someone with a literature degree can fill me in in the comments, that would be much appreciated. Another frustrating element comes with how quiet this movie is. I don't mean that in terms of thematic exploration or scene setting either, no, I literally mean the movie is quiet. It feels like someone turned the levels on the soundboard down to the lowest they could go because most of the time, you'll be cranking your volume up as much as it can go, and you still won't be able to make out anything anyone is saying or anything that's happening in the background. While this is mostly an issue that improves by the final act of the movie, an hour is a long time to go without hearing what's happening on screen. Well, at least until the background track or the ethereal whale noises inevitably blow out your speakers. Just to further compound the what is happening in this scene problem, especially around the beginning and the midpoint of the movie, many of the scenes are not particularly well lit. Sure, one could argue something to the effect of it's a dingy medieval castle under torchlight or it's nighttime, of course you can't see. But if I can't see what's happening in a scene where I already can't hear what's happening, and where I don't understand what's happening half the time, you're gonna start seeing people dosing themselves with blue light in protest. Lastly, I'm not sure if I can call this a complaint, but this is a movie based on a story written in the 14th century. It is heavily steeped in mythology and legend, and much of the story beats on screen reflect this. So if you don't understand why something happened, it's probably because they were trying to stay true to storytelling conventions that we lost touch with several hundred years ago. 
So if you're anything like a lot of the people who watch this movie, you may require a few consultations with Google to get the full picture. I know, I know, a lot of you are gonna say, great, I watched this stupid movie and now I have to do homework to understand it? We all know you were gonna go doom scroll YouTube immediately after this movie ended anyway, so go dive through the mythology section for a few minutes. Who knows, you might just learn something. The final rating for this tale of the night that would be is 6.5 out of 10. Though undeniably breathtaking in its visual presentation, music, and sound design, bolstered by some truly thoughtful and committed performances, the grand and philosophical reverence often bogs this movie down, making its quiet and reserved pace feel sluggish and prolonged. The best way, perhaps, to describe The Green Knight is that watching it is like viewing a fine art exhibit in the comfort of your own home. Confusing vagaries and all.